Day three. The siege is starting to feel like a waiting game. Soldiers and policemen passing the time of day. Then suddenly... Shortly after noon, a shot rings out. And then six or seven explosions coming from inside the complex. Well, there's a series of shots ringing out now, just outside the shopping center. Black smoke we can see coming from the top of the building. We don't know what's going on inside, but certainly this is the most action we've heard in quite a number of hours. The building where the gunmen hold up is on fire. Reinforcements are brought in, including an armoured personnel carrier. Government forces are engaged on a major assault to try to dislodge the militants. But the attackers are not giving up without a fight. This morning, the BBC spoke to a commander from Al-Shabaab, the Somali group with links to Al-Qaeda, that says it carried out the attack. Speaking in a British accent, he said their fighters were well organised, there would be no surrender. There is a command centre which has been uh, in touch with the Mujahideen there at the moment, and uh, all the operations have been uh, uh, were, were coordinated, of course. There will be no negotiations. Uh, we've spoken to the uh, Mujahideen who are inside Westgate, and they told us that the Kenyan government uh, was urging them to negotiate. When the militants attacked the mall at noon on Saturday, hundreds of terrified shoppers fled. Those who managed to escape then were the lucky ones. But many of them are only now beginning to come to terms with their experiences. The government said it killed at least three militants during today's assault, but still the crisis is not over. The terrorists could be uh, running and hiding in some store somewhere or something, but all flaws now are under our control. I also confirm that we, fully, we have fully cordoned the building so that there is no room for escapees. The army has always said that its overriding concern has been to get the remaining hostages out alive. If there are any left now, they'll be preparing to spend a third terrifying night inside. He shot at us. My son's head missed the bullet by just an inch. My daughter kept whispering to everybody, pretend you're dead, pretend you're dead, he won't shoot, pretend you're dead. Security guard who was just lying next to where I was was shot in the head. He died instantly. I saw that actually. Then he shot at me. Unfortunately, the bullet actually, if you look here, actually, there was a grace. As your president and as a leader and also as a Kenyan, I feel the pain of every life we have lost and share your grief at our nation's loss. My nephew and his fiance were amongst those who died in this attack. The last 24 hours have been uh, quite overwhelming. We have seen quite a lot of uh, casualties. There are things that we have seen we have never ever seen before. People have come in with a lot of injuries from bullet wounds and shrapnel injuries. We tried escaping and they threw a grenade and grenade, uh, the sharp particles entered me into my hand and my leg. The fourth day and the world can only watch and wait. Security forces are on a constant vigil outside the Westgate shopping centre. They claim to be in control, but it's clear the battle isn't over. Another explosion and more gunfire ring out. Soldiers can just be seen racing around the building. Our forces moved in to the mall. Then they started the final assault on the mall. We have had a couple of fire shots from what looks like uh, powerful weapons. And then what we are being in, what I've been informed just now is that uh, our forces have taken over the first floor, the second floor, and the third floor. They are not with the fourth floor. Unconfirmed reports on social media say that Al Shabaab claims its militants are holding their ground and that some hostages are still alive. Praise the Lord, Prophet of the Lord. Praise the Lord, Pastor Joel. Praise the Lord, my Lord. Yes, I'm calling right now live from uh, Vienna in Austria. Uh, and uh, the time here is about uh, seven minutes or so to nine o'clock p.m. And it's on the 9th of July. 
on the year is 2012. Well, this past night, the Lord spoke with me about a very tremendous distress, a very shocking distress that is coming to Kenya. A very, very historic distress coming to Kenya. And the Lord is asking for repentance. The Lord is still asking for the same thing, repentance, that the nation may repent, that he may deliver the nation. But I see a black day, like a black day coming to the nation, a very historic distress coming to the nation of Kenya. And the Lord is asking for repentance that Kenya may prepare for the coming of the Messiah. Now, this is bound to happen soon, the way the Lord made me understand. But remember that every time the nation that the Lord has spoken to repents, and the Lord is always faithful enough to deliver such a nation into eternity, eternal life, to save the nation. Again, I see a very, very shocking distress, a historic distress. I know that a lot of people are tuned in now from New York City, tuned in from Virginia, from Australia, the whole of Europe, Africa, and listening to this prophecy now. I see a black day that's coming to the nation of Kenya. It's a very historic distress. And the Lord is asking that the people of Kenya observe national repentance to prepare the way for the coming of the Messiah. It is the Lord that has kept Kenya for all these years since independence, since her birth, until this day. Only the Lord is able to deliver a nation, especially in these perilous days before the Messiah returns. Again, I've called from Vienna in Austria in the mighty name of Jesus. Last night the Lord spoke to me about a war that is coming. Serious war. You see tanks and so forth. And they, and they are going to attack. I, I saw a lot of explosions of bombs. They, they are homemade bombs. A lot of homemade bombs. And it's going to take place in Kenya. Homemade bombs. And then when they, the bombs, the bombs, bombs everywhere. People are running. I was running in there. The Lord put me in there. I was running. Because you run here. You watch the other bomb dig a deep hole there. Another one is near here. We're running. It might explode. It was bad. This past night. And then when the tanks came, they were speaking Arabic. The tanks now. They were speaking Arabic in the tanks. I mean, the soldiers inside, they had them, you know, the Lord makes you hear them talking, you know, in Arabic. So I heard them talking Arabic. So they're going to attack, uh, so there's going to be a war around that, can, that place, eh? around East Africa here. War is coming. I see a lot of terrorist bombs, 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 bombs. We were running. I was in there. I was running for my life. Because as we watched one bomb that exploded and dug a deep hole, we say, oh, run, the next one is next. We were running. We were running. I was running. And so, and then the, 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 the tanks came. I saw now the armored personnel carriers, and they're speaking Arabic. So there's going to be war down there. There's going to be war coming in that region. Speaking Arabic. They're going to the soldier, the, from an Arab-speaking nation, right? The, the tanks, the soldiers inside, it makes me hear them come talking inside the tanks. So there is war coming to that region between Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Somalia. The building where the gunmen hold up is on fire, 
Reinforcements are brought in, including an armoured personnel carrier. Government forces are engaged on a major assault to try to dislodge the militants. Major terror attack in Kenya over the course of the weekend. The Westgate Mall of Nairobi, Kenya, was attacked by between 10 and 15 militants over the course of the weekend. They stormed the mall uh, in multiple areas, killing dozens. Now, it did not take long for a terrorist organization to claim credit for the attack. The Al-Shabaab uh, terrorist organization from neighboring Somalia claiming it. Sustained gunfire of about five minutes broke out this morning at the shopping mall. Security remains very alert as army and police helicopters continue to circle the mall. According to Kenya Defense Forces, KDF, this ordeal must end as soon as possible. KDF and police are not giving a deadline of when they will root out the attackers from the mall, but they say most hostages have been rescued. The death toll now stands at 69. Somalia-based Islamist group Al-Shabaab claimed responsibility for the attack, and according to their spokesperson, Sheikh Ablaziz Abu Muskab, their plan was to attack Kenya when security least expected it. Ablaziz spoke to Qatar-based Al Jazeera television on Sunday and said they attacked Westgate because it is where most decision makers in Kenya gather to shop and relax. Anna Marie Desolage, a Canadian diplomat, is among the people that were killed by attackers. More than 150 people have been left injured.